I am really tired. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but anyways, um, I have an update on this, the Grand Design by Stephen Hawking. I want him alone enough. And uh, I, I just finished the book. Um, very interesting. Um, and uh, I do um, plan to to uh, go into greater detail, but uh, first I just wanted to give my overall impression having uh, read the entire book, and there's parts that I'm going to have to read again. Um, uh, the part on uh, backwards causation uh, which really isn't very long, it's only like two pages. And uh, the last chapter, I really didn't uh, follow what he was, what they were getting at in the last chapter, The Grand Design. But that's the title of the last chapter of the book, The Grand Design. Uh, they're kind of talking on and on about the, uh, li the game of life, uh, which I thought, uh, all through the book when they, they, they keep alluding to the game of life, I thought they were talking about the the, um, I don't know, Milton Bradley or, or whoever published it, a uh, board game uh, where you roll dice and you go around the square. Uh, but uh, 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 apparently uh, there's actually a uh, some computer software uh, called the Game of Life, uh, which uh, is very interesting. It has, uh, uh, it, it, it seems that it would have a lot of uh, interesting and important applications and implications. Uh, for example, uh, uh, you could uh, use it to model evolution, like a virtual organism evolving. And, but uh, yeah, so I'm going to have to read that chapter again. Uh, but my my general overall impression of the book, what I'm hearing Hawking and Melodinov saying. And what I'm hearing them saying, what they're intending to say, uh, could be two totally different things. Uh, but but what what I'm hearing uh, from the pages of the book, they uh, want to. Uh, th th they're faced with the teleological argument for God's existence, and uh, they find. The teleo teleological argument uh, compelling, uh, inescapable, uh, but at the same time, uh, they don't want to admit that a theistic God exists, uh, so they, they reject the conclusion a priori. Uh, so therefore, they do all kinds of hand wavings uh, to uh, try to uh, come up with some uh, possible explanation namely a uh, version of the multiverse uh, hypothesis, not theory, hypothesis, and uh, tying this into M-theory, uh, brain theory, string theory, whatever you want to call it. Um, and uh, there's not really any evidence uh, for any of this, uh, but they're hoping that maybe someday they might find uh, evidence uh, and at that point, they will have a um, a natural explanation of the uh, beginning of the universe. And God is not necessary for that because there's uh, a natural explanation. Uh, but I think uh, uh, the, the, there's a couple of problems with that, and, and I'll probably uh, get into this in more detail uh, when I when I go into more detail on the book. Um, uh, but uh, uh, the first thing is, uh, a natural explanation it does not preclude a supernatural explanation. Uh, there are different levels of explanation. So uh, by having a natural explanation, that's not mutually exclusive to having a supernatural explanation. Uh, there's a very cr uh, crass uh, time that they set up, a straw man uh, that they set up in the book, uh, where... We, uh, scientists uh, will study various phenomena of nature, and uh, it, it progresses. So uh, at first, uh, there's not a lot known, uh, maybe just like uh, Newtonian theories of gravity, uh, and, and then over time, we discover more and more. 
um, about how stars form and so on. Uh, so uh, we, we uh, the, the, the assumption, the paradigm is that uh, religious people, uh, such as myself, would take the current uh, uh, absence of a scientific explanation and say, well, uh, uh, we, we hope science doesn't doesn't find anything, uh, but until then, we're we're going to say that God that God directly did this, um, and then science progresses and and uh, there's lo there's less and less gaps, uh, you know, it's the old God of the gaps uh, uh, um, stereotype which uh, Christians don't hold to. <laughs> we, we've explained this a billion times. It's not God of the gaps, okay? We know that the God of the gaps reasoning is fallacious. That's why we do not use God of the gaps. Uh, uh, so so uh, there's that whole straw man. Um, and then the, the second uh, problem, um, the, the, the first problem is uh, the, this misrepresentation of... of the interrelationship between science and, and religion, uh, which they conceive of as the God of the Gaps. Um, so that's not mutually exclusive. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm really tired, so I, I kind of lost where I was, where I was going uh, with this. Uh, I can't remember the other uh, objection uh, that I had. Um, but uh, yeah, the the upcoming videos will be more uh, professional, <laughs> to say the least. Um, uh, but 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 yeah. So uh, the the second yeah, it's gone. But uh, as I uh, go through this, um, oh, I remember now. Uh, the the um, what's really dangerous uh, I think about this book and uh, uh, I'm trying to be more uh, friendly to uh, biological evolution these days than I have been in the past uh, but my impression uh, is that uh, a similar thing happened with Darwin's Origin of the Species. Uh, what they're saying in, in this book is that, uh, uh, and, and uh, Dawkins, Richard Dawkins, uh, was talking about this as well in The God Delusion. Um, they're, they're talking about a, a kind of cosmic evolution uh, and natural selection uh, where you have, uh, you, you know, the multiverse is analogous to the gene pool and uh, uh, various uh, universes uh, come out. And um, they have different laws and, and so on, and, and uh, the uh, you, it it's uh, it's such a, a highly speculative, highly controversial view in physics uh, about uh, you know the multiverse and, and various other things that they're talking about. String theory is is it's not even a theory; it's it's a it's a, an hypothesis because it hasn't been proven. They admit in the book that it hasn't been proven, uh, uh, but uh, they're saying, well, it, it could be that maybe someday we might possibly uh, uh, be able to prove, uh, if if string theory is true, uh, that we'll be able to prove that string theory is true, uh, and therefore there'll be a kind of uh, uh, universe version of, of biological evolution. Uh, but but and 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 then people coming along and saying, oh well, we we don't need God. We can explain uh, the the appearance of design in life uh, by appeal to science, natural explanations only. Uh, we don't need God. Uh, and then after a while, it's it's kind of forgotten that uh, this multiverse idea and string theory. And inflation, well, inflation, I think, is, is pretty firmly established. 
uh, in science, uh, but the uh, multiverse and the uh, string theory uh, is, is very speculative um, and unproven at, at this point. Now that could change, that could change in the future, uh, but uh, it could be that the, the, they'll just sweep under, the, this is a suggestion, sweep under the carpet, this is just a suggestion, and people will just kind of assume that uh, it's, it's an absolute uh, fact, uh, there's no room for God because we know there's a multiverse without any proof. Uh, it's just it's just a suggestion, and then after a while, after suggesting it enough, they'll uh, people perhaps will think uh, that it is a, a certain assured result of scholarship. Um, but like with Darwinism. Uh, or, or with biological macroevolution, uh, we don't eliminate the need for God by providing a natural explanation. The natural explanation itself is depending upon the supernatural explanation. Uh, but that's uh, another story for another time, uh, which I think I will get into uh, as I talk about this book. Uh, Model-dependent realism is one of the topics that I want to deal with. Uh, miracles that they badly misrepresent miracles are. And, and I understand that Hawking and Milonov are not philosophers, or they're not Christians, or not religious people. Uh, so we don't, ex uh, we we shouldn't expect them to uh, really be authorities on those topics. Uh, but yet, when the whole book is about how uh, there's this grand design that, that that's just a, a necessity of of uh, a uh, atheistic universe or a an impersonal deistic universe, uh, and, and like all through the book they're talking about how uh, the Bible's wrong and 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 I don't know it's it's like they think they're an authority on something but they really don't know anything about it. Uh, uh, so, uh, and the whole book is, is based on one gross misunderstanding after another. Uh, a lot of contradictions in the book. Uh, uh, quantum mechanics is certainly uh, a very difficult thing to understand. Uh, uh, even quantum physicists uh, don't understand it, uh, as they rightly point out in the book. Uh, uh, but uh, that's not the kind of contradictions I'm talking about. I'm talking about when they will say, I don't know if they're intentionally trying to like blind us with science, or or if, if they're just so ineloquent that they can't. Uh, uh, like, there's all kinds of ambiguous phrases that can be taken in 25 different ways, and and, and one statement that contradicts the previous sentence. Uh, I don't know, but uh, yeah, more to come. Uh, model dependent realism, miracles. Uh, uh, those are two of the things that I definitely want to hit. Uh, the design argument, they, they talk about uh, uh, the strong and weak anthropic principles uh, in relation to the teleological argument. Uh, so hopefully we'll deal with that as well. Stay tuned. Uh, shalom.